the Kay and Hammer Show. We're back in New York City for another day. Sports Business Journal Awards are tonight. I am going to support FanDuel. Amy Howe is up for a huge award, our CEO. She's the biggest badass ever. And I can't wait to be there and just see all of the awesome behind the scenes stuff that goes on. So many people work so hard. And that stuff gets awarded on nights like the Emmys on Monday night and yeah. lights like tonight with the Sports Business Journal Awards. Uh, I'm being rewarded being here, not only because I get to see your face when I'm in New York City, but also because this Aaron Rodgers sled weight, you know, quarterback mule thing that's going on is very <laughs> fun because when I'm in the car in the morning, I get to listen to the radio. Oh, yeah, and WFAN is going to have Gems. a field day with this. Why are we strapping weights to our quarterback? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. I already saw one article say, I think it was Florio, that said, you know, that he didn't do this in Green Bay. Why are we doing this? So people are trashing the Jets, and that's what we're here for on Up and Adams to discuss, even though we're huge Jets fans, of course. Should you be concerned, we'll talk to you about it. Also, we have a three-time All-Pro on the show. We do. Lane Johnson. Uh, one of our first guests, really, yeah. on our show ever will be stopping by and hanging out. He does amazing stuff on the field. He's an even better guy off of it. And, um, Tari. <laughs> Fast and, fast and Furious. We're getting Fast and Furious. It's yeah. the biggest movie, <laughs> apparently, is. of all time. And Fuel Fest. The hugest. Don't forget about Fuel, Fuel Fest. Fest. Listen, they have monster trucks at Fuel Fest. We'll talk to him. We'll talk to Cody Walker about it. Uh, Fuel Fest and Up and Adam starts now. Are we going to Fuel Fest? Sure to call this Kelly and Ryan. I feel like <laughs> I think Ryan left the show. She's doing it now with her husband, isn't she? I don't know, Mr. Consuelos. I haven't watched since Regis. I got to be honest. You haven't watched since Regis. Wow. Love, love her, Regis. This is Hamilton. I'm yeah. Kay, and we have OTA action that continues and is going on. And we're going to start in New York with some of these storylines ahead of Lane Johnson joining the show and Tyrese Gibson being on the show. But I mean, starting here in New York, New York Jets fans holding their breath after what you called as a Pruder film <laughs> before the show <laughs> surfaced of Rogers limping around. It was a little scary. Yeah, it was. You're always concerned to see that, and you know, we got the grainy footage. We we got, we got a few better images here. The, the Jets trainer's checking him out. Uh, but this is the controversy here. He's strapped <laughs> up like a mule to this weight. He said in his press conference after that this is something he's never done before. <laughs> so there are going to be questions. Why is he doing this if he's never done it before? He didn't need it in the past. Why does he need it now? No, now this is all hurt. drama over nothing. Aaron uh, Rodgers yeah. assured everyone there's no problem. Take a listen. What happened that kept you out of practice today? I just tweaked my calf and... Good photos there. I just tweaked my calf in the uh, little pre-practice condition inside. Decided to take a take a vet day. Can keep you down a while? Or a short time? Mm, I don't know. I mean, I don't think it's too too serious. What is that smile? He, that's what I'm saying. There's no reason to be worried about this. The smile. He he was having a good time at that press conference yesterday. And we'll get into a little bit more of that. It's a great but. photo. That's a, that's a photo you put on a T-shirt. That's a photo you frame and you put up if you're Aaron Rodgers in your house. It's very funny. He was also asked about what it's been like the past couple of weeks. He's in New York now. Different vibes, different energy, younger guys. Post-derby last three or four weeks. And again, he could barely hide his smile. Uh, what's um, the adjustment been like over these last three or four weeks? Yeah, it's been awesome. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, haven't been to OTAs in the last couple of years, so it's been nice to kind of be out here, be in the meetings, uh, speak up about certain things, little adjustments in the offense and additional coaching points. Obviously got a long history with Nathaniel, so he gives me a lot of latitude to speak up in the meetings and, and just the opportunity to help out Zach and Tim and Chris in the room was a lot of fun. If you're if you're Peter Bukowski of Locked on Packers, you are rolling your eyes at that. You know, I haven't been to OTAs in a while, <laughs> Packers. Yeah. <laughs> you know, basically, not really, though, but yeah. kind of. A little I mean, bit. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> the smile. I mean, he's having the time of his life, and I think the only question is, is he's having the time of his life until until that minute he doesn't? And then what does that look like? But then yeah. again, like, let him have that minute. He's had that minute against the NFC North teams. He's had that minute again, and then it all ends up fine. And yeah. well, so like, 
Even when that minute happens and he gets frustrated or demonstrative and like it's not a smile and he's not like gregarious like we're seeing him and revitalized right now. Yeah. Like that's just what happens. So so I'm not when that moment happens, I'm also not going to say, "Oh, now it's different and here the sky is falling." I'm just not going to have that reaction. Yeah, I don't I, I don't think I am either. And um yeah, you you hear him talk about Nathaniel Hackett, the comfort level he has, even just calling him Nathaniel. Um, yeah. <laughs> and the input that he's having in the offense. And also, like, uh, I love how there he talks about how much he's enjoyed working with Zach Wilson and the other quarterbacks in that room. What a, what a great line. Like, what a perfect, like, oh, here, and Miss Universe goes to Aaron Rodgers' answer. Like, that was yeah. a perfect thing to say, that he also knows he's there to be a leader and bring them along and get the best out of them. It's very cool. It's all working. Yeah. It's all very kumbaya. And we're loving it in. In New York. What else we got? Oh, we, this um, uh, Jersey Shore thing, right? Oh, yeah. Let's show this a little bite. Why is everyone freaking out about this? <laughs> what has it been like getting to know New Jersey, and how has it compared to your expectations as you come in? Look, I'll be honest, the only Jersey I, I kind of knew about besides Teterboro was Jersey Shore. <laughs> and I was, I was assured that was not a proper representation of this great state. But <laughs> You're not a fan of Snooki? No, I'm not saying I'm not a fan. I'm just that's that was the only lens I saw, you know, the jersey through. And no, I'm a fan of all of them. I actually uh, went to uh, Poly D, uh, a Poly D set back in Vegas, and like I don't know, back when I used to go there a few times a year, back in like 2011 or something. So I have no thoughts. What are you, why is everyone losing their mind over this thing? I don't know. Like that was his entire reference point for New Jersey was. Jersey Shore and What is Teterboro it supposed to be? In Teterboro. What should it be? Would you like to represent <laughs> New Jersey? New Jerseyans, are you offended? Let us know. The mm. Teterboro thing is hilarious. Yeah. Like, just tell us you have a private jet and a tail number without telling us that you have a private jet and a tail number. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of just, I don't know, what is what is New Jersey supposed to be? Like Jersey City and Hoboken? Also like, going. Is Eli Manning offended? Let me know. And going to Vegas, flying to Vegas to go to Pauly D concerts. I'm surprised pretty, he didn't say the Garden good. State soundtrack because it was so good and like that that Shins record really slapped on the like the, they had the best soundtrack, Garden State man, Zach Braff, Natalie Portman. Like I would imagine he'd say that. He's kind of surprising about the Pauly D. The thing about Aaron Rodgers that people continue to fail to understand, he is. You cannot be surprised by anything because he is the biggest chameleon true. on the planet. He adapts to situations he's in, cities he's in, different hairstyles and different looks go with different girlfriends. I'm telling you, it's a whole thing. <laughs> I could do a research, I could do a dissertation on this. I could do a capstone college degree project on Aaron Rodgers and the different sort of sides of him and what optically or per, like what our perception might be of that. Maybe we'll see the Pauly D haircut come out next. Who knows? Oh, God. Uh, uh, I want to hear from Zach Wilson. Is Zach Wilson speaking? Um, we'll, we'll see. I haven't heard he anything hasn't. from him yet. I'd like to hear from Zach Wilson. I think I'd like to see that. Yeah, they're probably, you know, keeping him away a little bit. But, um, but yeah, yeah, I'm sure we'll hear from him at some point. We need to find the media member in New York that's going to be our person. Like, is it our guy from the Post? Is it, like, who's going to be in there, like, yeah, giving Brian, us? I think Brian, yeah, Brian Costello would be good. Yeah, he's been awesome. He's so hilarious. He we is. should have, but I want him back, like, after these... OTA vibes and to see really That's what it's point. like and get like sort of a litmus test because I feel like by the end of the year it'll be a nice like splice cut together. That's it's very true. interesting. All right, let's go to the Niners. You, <laughs> this psychopath, I was like, are you, what are you doing right now? It was like midnight East Coast time and he's texting it me. It really was. 9 p.m. Sure, well, yeah. for me it was really late and you're <laughs> texting me about all these things you want to talk about in the beginning of the show. So yeah. let's do it. We're going to the Niners and we're going to the land of many quarterbacks, right? Yeah. Shanahan spoke with the media. We love to pick that apart, of course. Course, and he said Brock Purdy is going to lose the towel and start throwing an actual football with uh, out a weight attached to his leg, hopefully, next week. And he had, you know, pouring cold water on anyone reading into Trey Lance getting first team reps over Sam Darnold in the interim. He said it will, quote unquote, even out. Yeah. Okay. Then Shan Man had this to say about the quarterback room, which sounds very familiar. I mean, we got three guys, we got two guys who are talented enough to be taken in the top five of the draft, and we have another guy who um, played like it last year, so uh, I like the three guys we got, and I've always been a fan of Brandon Allen, um, just watching him throughout his career, and to be able to get him in here also, I feel real fortunate with our four. Go ahead. Yeah, 
I mean, we had to throw that in there because I remember you saying a couple of weeks ago that maybe Niners fans should enjoy having three really talented quarterbacks in the room and let it sort itself out, and that seems to be If exactly I lean back caution, one more inch, but... I would literally fall back and hit my head off this chair in front of this green screen. <laughs> green screen. It's exactly what he is saying. I mean, stats. <laughs> Um, uh, he seemed upset that I wanted everyone to just take a deep breath, have a little moment here, and appreciate the talent that they have in the quarterback room. So I'm glad that Kyle and I are on the same page. But the talk of the Niners on Twitter yesterday was Trey Lance's mechanics, okay? So Kyle Shanahan explained that the mechanics sort of d- disintegrated, deteriorated, because he was playing through the broken finger during his rookie, rookie year, and then he, you know, he's worked really hard on, on getting things back to where they need to be. Well, we got this video. Okay, this is courtesy of Grant Cohn, who's, who, who, uh, yeah, here we go. He was there, he caught this. All right, what do you think? Yeah, so a lot of people are wondering, we saw all these videos servicing. Thank you, Grant, for uh, allowing us to use this. Um, but we saw all these videos surfacing and everybody's like, okay, new mechanics, awesome. Like, this looks really good, but what's different? So I want to take a look and actually I'll show you what's different let's here. Let's go. So let's bring up the uh, the split. So on the left side is 2022. You're a psychopath. You see, he's dropping that elbow a little bit. The stride's a little bit long. His base is an under. And then look at the higher release point here on the oh. right side. He's a little more balanced in his stance, higher release point. And that's a, that allows him to get over that line and again, stay consistent with his mechanics. And you'll see it here too, we have a split screen. Look at that, look at the elbow dropping on the left side. That ball's right out in front of his helmet, right? Yeah. On the right side, that ball's up above the helmet. That's the consistent release point that you wanna see out of your quarterback. So it is a pretty significant difference. And again, we'll see how it pays off for him. We don't know if he's gonna be starting at any point this year or what's gonna be happening, but I know Niners fans were you know, really into hearing the storyline with his mechanics, so I thought we'd This is the most Hamilton (laughs) inside baseball May 24th. May 24th shit I have ever seen. Are you joking with that? How did you even, are you insane? It's OTAs, you know? This is, this is what we, uh, this I go, what we live I go for. to dinner, for I go to May. dinner, I come back, and this is what we decide to do in the show. I just leave it in a, he's putting it, like, like this, it, it, so you said the word significant. There yeah. is something to, to really look into here, okay? Yeah. And, if you say so. And, and where we're gonna go next, too. Kyle Shannon talked about how, yes. you know, how Trey Lance sitting out a little bit kind of helped him refine those mechanics and actually helped him develop a lot. All right, let's hear that. Um, so I thought he got it going this time with his time away. Just he knew what he had to focus on. He, he had known what he had struggled with. He had known what he had done good with. He'd gotten to see two different quarterbacks playing our offense two different ways. And I just think his time away he was a lot more deliberate and in a position where he knew what he could isolate on, which I think helped him compared to last year. Do I love Kyle Shanahan? Like, oh, do I love him right now? The time away allowed him to be more deliberate. <sighs> he got to watch two quarterbacks run our system in two different ways. Those are the words of that coach. I know Trey was forced into missing time because of the injury. We all get it. But the point still remains, without having to focus on playing every week, he was able to hone in, to feel relaxed, to work on the things that he really needs to fix for his game. So we'll see what it means for Trey in time. But I ho- this is what I'm telling Indy with Colts fans and all. Be patient. Don't, like, scream and have pitchforks out to get Anthony Richardson in there if it's not necessary. The same thing, Titans with Will Levis. Like, listen to this man. There's examples, too many of them, like Patrick Mahomes, like Aaron Rodgers, and those should illustrate how sitting, learning, seeing things differently, taking things a little bit slow can benefit quarterbacks. Not even benefit, but like not F them up developmentally. It's not even about being better. It's about like the risk of what happens when you do just throw them in there that needs to be considered. Yeah, and and that's one of the things Kyle talks about too with the finger and why the mechanics got bad for Trey Lance is because he was forced, you know, they had packages for him in where he was playing and he was also running scout team. So he's like, he was just forcing himself out there even though the finger didn't feel right and he had to adjust his mechanics to kind of fit that and it hurt his development. So, I don't know, out of all of this too, I'm kind of like, I want to see Trey Lance play foot. I love Brock Purdy, and Brock Purdy is probably going to take that starting job. But now, I like, yes, I kind of want to see Brock Purdy Trey Lance. is taking the starting job. Yeah. Does anyone like? 
But now, like, I'm We're excited. We're throwing in the towel. Yeah. Okay? It's over. <laughs> the game, it's it's Brock Purdy's game yeah. until he messes it up and then inevitably. But now they changed that rule. So are we just not going to see Christian McCaffrey this year? Is that what this means? Yeah, that's what that, that's what that means. They'll be allowed to carry an emergency third quarterback. But whether it's in San Francisco or somewhere else, like, uh, Things are sounding really positive. He was really positive on Trey Lance yesterday. I think Brady's suiting up for this Niners squad still under center. You watch what happens here in 2023. We have a big show. We have three-time All-Pro Lane Johnson on the program. We have, I can't, what you want, a whole lot of Tyrese is on the program. Cody Walker on the show. So we'll talk to them about what they've got going on uh, later this month. A very fun event you could be at. Stay tuned, stay tuned. All right, my next guests have this insane thing going on that I need to know more about. It is drifting, it is drag racing, it is entertainment, entertainment palooza. It's called Fuel Fest, okay? It goes down at Irwindale Speedway on June 3rd. They're in the family within the Fast and Furious franchise, of course, absolute stars. Uh, And this past weekend, of course, the latest installment, Fast X, opened at number one in theaters worldwide. Took no surprise for anyone who loves these guys in this franchise. Tyrese Gibson, Cody Walker, good morning. Good Good morning. morning. Thank you for having us. So happy to have you guys on. I can't wait to learn about Fuel Effects. I hear there's monster trucks that are going to be there for the first time, so we are excited. we got a big event to talk about. But you're both born and raised L.A. boys. I'm a New York girl. I'm here in New York. You're both big Lakers fans. I'm sorry your boys got knocked out. Tyrese, you share a birthday with LeBron. I know that. You guys talk about each other. And he came out after the game, and he said he's going to take some time to talk, think about retirement. What do you think, Tyrese? Is LeBron going to walk away? No. No, he's not walking away. He, he, I think, uh, I think he's smart enough to know and understand how how much people love him and respect him. And uh, you know, I think you know us us as Capricorns, we have a way with words. Ah. Um, yeah. So I think you know I got a lot to think about. People are just running with that. And hinting at him retiring. I mean, truth be told, he's got the physicality of a 20-year-old, even though he's 38, because he takes much better care of himself than most. So, no, he ain't going nowhere. At least I hope he doesn't. I think he's got so much more to do. And the fact that he's playing in that arena, rest in peace, Kobe, I think he should definitely go as long mm. as he can, just out of respect to Kobe Bryant. He should just go as long as he can. Um, before he actually taps out, you know. And we'll see if he can play with his son. That's a big storyline everybody's looking at. Tyrese, what are you doing? Where are you? What are you doing? What are, what, what, what kind of, are you getting Listen, a tour of your man, house? What's I'm, happening? I'm, <laughs> no, I'm I'm sorry. I, honestly, I just, <laughs> this technology stuff, man, I'm still trying to, <laughs> I told Cody, I said, man, please take over the interview because I don't, I, don't <laughs> I don't have a stand to put my phone on, man. It's just, <laughs> No, Tyrese, this is, no, no. This interview is going to be all about you because you're hilarious right now. I, I, the, the more I see of your ridiculous house, the better. It must be nice to be in the Fast and Furious family. Cody, we've got Fuel Fest. Take over here. This is June 3rd. Maybe LeBron will be there. He's not playing in the finals. It's your fifth year doing this. Congratulations on all Thank of you. the success and all of the fun. And you're bringing this thing all over the world. What are your fans in store for this year? Well, I, I, we call this a, a celebration of the automotive culture. So we literally bring everybody together um, under under the under the sky. This is an outdoor event, um, and we do we have an, a huge car show. But we have drifting, we have competitive drifting tandems. People can do ride alongs with some of our pro drivers. Uh, we've got monster trucks this year at the show. We've got live music. We've what? got food. Yeah, it's it's actually a really cool event. Um, obviously, Irwindale is very special and unique, and that uh, that's where drifting first arrived here in the U.S. Um, after making its way out of Japan, and uh, they filmed a bunch of Fast Nine there, coincidentally, um, uh, for the for the previous film. So it's cool. We always sell out the show. It's uh, it's 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 our home turf, like you said. We're both born and raised in L.A., so this is this is returning home for us. 
I love it. You're making it bigger and better. Like adding monster trucks is huge. Grave Digger will show up. Megasaurus will be eating cars up. We love to see it. Uh, I'm not a car girly. So, Cody, what makes a great drift? Like, can I drift in my Kia Sorento? No, you cannot because your Kia Sorento is front wheel drive. Um, you need a rear wheel, rear wheel drive car um, or all wheel drive. If it's set up the right way, you need a lot of power. All right, all right. Oh, geez, this is this looks horrifying. But I understand Helen Mirren loves this stuff. She's an undercover speedster. Tyrese, will, will we see her at Fuel Fest tearing up the track? And what was it like making a movie with her? Well, first of all, I just have to tell y'all that being is that fast just came out and you guys went above and beyond to support it. We're number one around the world. We do not take that for granted. We appreciate the love. So many of us live in L.A. that's from the Fast cast. I mean, we don't like to throw names out there, but you might want to be there on the third because uh, the heat is about to be crazy. I mean, when you see multiple helicopters landing, just look up, and you just never know <laughs> who's going to get up out of that helicopter. But, yeah, you know, listen, there's a there's a few real guys in this movie that really do the speeding thing in real life, uh, including me. Now, I don't really take it to the racetrack, uh, but we definitely uh, do this thing in, in real life. Um, so, you know, and the fact that you have a front wheel drive car, you could actually get in the passenger side <laughs> with a professional drifter so you can get the full on experience because I don't think you anybody should get out there and start drifting on their own if they haven't already done it. <laughs> um, it is a live audience and we have had a really incredible run because no one has gotten hurt wow. and we want to keep it that way. Um, we also want to put this out there because this is my favorite thing. All kids 12 and under get in for free. And Whoa. yeah, 12 and under get in for free. So if you got four or five nieces, nephews, kids, you name it, I feel like there is no greater way to honor the future generation of drivers and, and being a part of this car culture than to bring the kids in and let them experience Fuel Fest for free um, all across the board. I mean, it is a family fun oriented event. No different than what we do with the Fast and the Furious. We want everybody to show up, have fun. And as he said, born and raised in L.A., so it's always the biggest crowd. Y'all better get in there early. Go to FuelFest.com, register your cars, make sure you get your tickets. It's only so many left. We're excited to bring this show back to L.A. Fuel Fest is about to get real. You just sold it so well. And you'll, you never know who will show up. I know and it's important to say, I mean, Vin Diesel showed up and surprised you guys. So like, like you're saying, look in the sky for those helicopters. Bring the whole family. Kids 12 and under are free. We love to listen. We've got a big audience here. We've got a big audience. Uh, sports fans in L.A., they'll love that. And proceeds, more importantly, Cody, from this event, it's important to sort of emphasize that. It benefits Reach Out Worldwide, which is a nonprofit charity founded by your brother, Paul Walker, of course. And there's been a ton of support for that. So make it happen. Fuel Fest, Monster trucks and all of that. Now we see Vin Diesel. I got Tyrese here. We got, you know, um, John Cena, Jason Momoa, Helen Mirren, Charlize Theron. I'm in this. Tyrese, who's the one star that you want to see join one of these movies in this franchise next? Um, well, I want Viola Davis to be my mama. Um, <laughs> and I want Denzel Washington to be my father. Um, I also want Matt Damon to join us um, because oh. I just think he's a real, a real guy. Um, and yeah, I, I mean, I have a list, you know, but I, I think right now we, we have a job to do it. I think we have to figure out a way to reimagine what all of us that's currently in the cast is going to do next. Um, but yeah, we, we, this has turned into something really crazy. I mean, 23 years ago, Paul Walker, our brother, rest in peace, he had a dream with Rob Cohen at the time, the director and Vin Diesel, 
And this all started with an article in Vibe magazine. And 23 years later, look at where things are. I wasn't in Fast One. Paul and Michelle and Sung and all of these guys, they're the true OGs. I came in on part two. But none of us can believe that this franchise has gotten as far as it's gotten. And we're just beyond grateful, which is why it feels like such an organic connection to go from all of these fans of Fast and the Furious in, in, in the cinema, in the theater, on the screen, to being able to bring the, 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 the physical, true car experience to the fans. And I think, you know, this, this excitement and love of the culture has never been able to physically put it up on his feet. And so the fans are like, finally, I got this car made. I'm in this yeah. car culture. I love this stuff because of the Fast and the Furious. And finally, I can put my car on display and actually meet the, 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 the stars of Fast. So it's been, it's been such an organic um relationship and and cody was brilliant to come up with this idea um and the fact that him and paul were kind of brainstorming about these things um many moons ago before he passed i just i love being a part of it and i i think every time we do an event and we see 15 20 000 people out there knowing that it's benefiting his charity and knowing that you know, the diversity that, that has been represented from the beginning in FAST shows up at these events on that level. It just, it, it makes my heart smile, you know? So, well, fuelfest.com, biggest... you guys come out. Yeah. We cannot wait to see you guys take pictures. Make sure y'all sign up for the VIP experience where you're going to be able to meet me and all of us, I won't say who, <laughs> we're all going to be backstage <laughs> hanging out. Um, yeah, but Cody, I love you and uh, FuelFest.com. And I, although I'm tired as ever right now, your energy <laughs> just gave me that caffeine shot that I needed this morning, young lady. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Tyrese, I will I will say this. You've seen it all. You've been around every celebrity. You've done movie after movie after movie in this franchise. And you are so truly great. There's such gratitude that, that I feel from you right now. You are so grateful, <laughs> truly. And I can tell, and I can tell when people are full of it and not. You are so <laughs> grateful for this, what this franchise has done for you, this family, which is a real family, um, for Paul Walker, for what you guys are doing with Fuel Fest, and, and fans are going to show up for that, and that's why fans love the franchise, because you guys buy in and you accept everyone for what they are and for what they're passionate yeah. for, and I think it's a really important and beautiful thing. And Cody, you're not, somehow Matt Damon's going to get your spot. You did not cameo in the latest film, but <laughs> someone very special no. to you does, your niece, Nobody your niece gets Meadow Walker. Nobody Cody's spot. Yeah. Nobody gets Cody's spot. <laughs> he is our blue-eyed, blue-eyed angel, and he is a walker. Okay, they they own the, they own the thing. Okay, it's all them. Um, yeah. yeah, but I wanted to make sure I responded to your beautiful words. You you know, it takes one to know one. You know, um, it's not too many genuine people left in the world. I think. Mm. Um, one of the things that I want to share on the airwaves, I think one of my greatest, uh, I feel emotional for some reason right now saying this, one of, one of the greatest things that I have discovered from this ongoing brotherhood and relationship that I've had the honor of having with Cody is that I feel like those iron sharp and iron moments where I can put certain things on his radar, get him to look at things through a different lens. I feel like I've stepped in to be the big brother that that Paul Walker is 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 uh, you know not around to be anymore, um, and that has been my greatest pride and joy, seeing that Cody is working at this fuel fest thing every single day, benefiting Reach Out worldwide. And, and doing what I know Paul would have been here to do with his brother. I, I just get to sit in the passenger seat and watch it all unfold while protecting him in any way I can as the big bro. So it's, uh, it's, it, is, it has been an honor. And I really hope you can join us, uh, Mrs. Genuine Soul. 
and invite all your <laughs> friends. And, and although you yes. will not be able to drift with your front wheel drive, we need your car <laughs> to be front and center so that we can oh. see um, oh. how you're contributing to this car culture. <laughs> yes. I'm going to contribute by supporting. Fuel Fest is going down June 3rd at the Irwindale mm -hmm. Speedway, a very special place. So tickets are still available. Very few and a VIP experience that sounds insane at fuelfest.com. Let's have a little fun here. And, and by the way, Meadow is in the new movie. So shout out to Meadow. I, we can't wait to see it. I didn't yes. get to see it last weekend. But we're going to end. Yes, we're going to end this. Cody, you got to be with Meadow in the next installment with Matt Damon, Denzel, and <laughs> Viola Davis, which I would love to see. But let's play that a little game fantastic. called... Yeah, let's cut, play a little game called Do You Catch My Drift? Now, Tyrese, you don't know this, but before the interview, we gave Cody a list of cast members from Fast X. Cody, using only one-word clues, you have to try to get Tyrese to guess which cast member you're referring to, okay? The only rule is that you can't use their real name or characters' names from the real movie. Does that make sense, Cody? Yeah, I got you. And and, and Ty, Ty, okay. Ty Boogie doesn't like surprises. And I want you to know, bro, I found out <laughs> it, about this once I called in. Okay? So just... Oh, try. okay. <laughs> All but right, I'm going to do my best. We go. well, I didn't is, get to prepare listen, for this, this so is, much, so... This is know. Fast and Furious, baby. Yeah, this is what we do. You know, uh, We're going to put I one minute, sleep, one minute on the clock. I didn't sleep too much last night. I'm probably going <laughs> to not do well on this. Hey, but Tyrese. Go ahead. Tyrese, I don't know what how were you, Tyrese, what were you doing? What were you doing last night that you didn't sleep? I just couldn't sleep. I'm in Atlanta, and and I'm getting oh. these text messages that we have these interviews, and I'm like, oh my god, I <laughs> forgot. I just couldn't sleep. That's all. I was just, I was just at home. I was just happy to be at home, and I was just up. Uh. <laughs> That, that makes two of us. I have a, I have a three week old baby. I have my third child oh on April thirtieth. So it's pretty wild over here. So no, no, no. You didn't just have an angel. All right, one minute he on the clock. Using one word angel. clues. Him and his wife did not know if they were going to have a boy or a girl. They had a boy, and he named my nephew, his new son, Paul. I can't take it. <laughs> So Cody, beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you. My brother was the fourth. April, the name yeah, had to stick April around. April 30th. I love that. You know what? I'm not going to make you guys play the game. I'm going to put you out of your misery. I love you both. We're not going to play because that's a perfect <laughs> way to end it. And Tyrese is so such a freaking expert at this. He's a professional, and he just got out of it. So I'm just going to take this time to say thank you, guys. You Get your tickets for Fuel best. Fest June 3rd. <laughs> Go to sleep. Take a nap I out there going, in Atlanta. All right. Thank you so here. much, guys. Amazing. Thank you Cody, so much for having us on here. Night. We're going back to sleep. <laughs> See y'all on June Okay, 3rd. go to sleep, we love you. Lane Johnson, up next, right here. When NBA playoff games tip off, there's no better place to bet than FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because now you can build a same-game parlay after the game's already started. Live SGPs are just one of the new features added for the playoffs. Live SGPs, that sounds fun. Go check it all out on FanDuel Sportsbook, the app, right now. I love that dance. Look at those moves. You've got three-time All-Pro Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia Eagles tackle with us today. Is there anyone tougher in the trenches? No! Lane Johnson, how are you? Welcome back. Doing good. Yeah, uh, just a few months away from training camp, so so winding down. Yeah, you got some new moves you're working on, buddy, over the summer? <laughs> yeah, after my surgery, I had to learn a few uh, to get back in the rhythm again. But, yeah, I'm glad that's over. But, yeah, feeling good. And, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, to the season. Amazing. It's great to see you. You look great. I, You know, we're, we're going to get into it all. But summer travels are what I'm thinking about. I might go to Italy. I might hit up a couple of training camps. Do I need to add Frisco to the list? Because, my goodness, Lane, the OL Mastermind Summit is coming up July 7th and 8th. And this teaser that was tweeted with this lineup, tell me all about it. Yeah, so we, we have uh, Will Shields coming this year, um, mm. Steve Hutchinson, um, Whitworth, uh, Anthony Munoz. So we're really just getting a whole broad selection of guys. But I think the main thing is to get all these different caliber of players. They can talk about their experience, you know, in NFL, how they trained, what they did. And I just think it gives, like, incredible insight, especially to a lot of the young guys that are in so they can learn and, and hopefully develop their game a little bit. 
those young guys. You're, you're 33. You're like an yeah. OG in this league, even though it doesn't look like it. Does it feel crazy to be like, I'm 33, but I, I mean, you're, you're at your peak. You're looking insane out there every game. Yeah, it, like in my mind, I'm still like 25. And then, you know, as the years go on, it's like, hey, I'm, I'm the old guy now. So it's it's crazy kind of how the, uh, the circle has, has came back to me. Do you and Jason joke about that? Do you embrace it? Yeah, I, I definitely embrace it. It seems like, you know, the older that we, we've gotten, the uh, the shorter the fuse it takes to kind of set us off. It's kind of like, you know, the, the dog you once had that was once young and youthful, and as they get older, they might get a little <laughs> bit more tested. <laughs> I like that comparison. That's a good metaphor. Uh, I want to do like a little check-in because you, you won the Super Bowl. You know what that feels like. And you lost the Super Bowl, so you know what that feels like. So you're a, a, sort of a, a rare person who gets the, the feeling of both. Uh, do, which one did you learn more from, the win or the loss? I mean, you learn a lot in both. I think the win, I just think you realize that the next year is very tough. The schedule is usually uh, a little bit tougher. And then you have people, you know, coming for you. They know, they know that they're playing against a good team. So mentally, that was a tough year. And then, you know, obviously the loss, I think you can learn a, a lot about. Um, you know, we we're, were very close to getting a second one. But I just, I think you learned how much work it takes and how special I think the moment is, um, you know, after the fact, you kind of realize it. But, yeah, it's just it's a long process. You know, you start in late July, and then you're not done until February. So it's just a, such a long season. It takes a lot of, you know, ability. It obviously takes a little bit of luck, you know, keeping healthy and, and all that. But really, uh, yeah, you, you grow, uh, you know, you learn to respect it, just the whole process and, and everybody involved. Lane, knowing how a loss feels now, do you feel like you celebrated back in 2018 enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I maybe could have taken a notch further. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, you just, uh, yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm two totally different, totally different people from, from them. But, yeah, I just, you know, I, I think I've grown to learn. I just appreciate the guys that I'm with. Uh, I remember Brent Selleck talking about how he was uh, playing in the NFC Championship, I think, his rookie year. And then he's like, you know, I'll be back. They lost, uh, lead to the Cardinals. And then, you know, he didn't go back till his 11th, 11th season, his last season. So, yeah, I'm just uh, taking advantage of all my new teammates, uh, learning those guys. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and just really setting, uh, getting ready for the season. I feel like we have a lot of ability, and uh, also we have a tough schedule. So, um, you know, it'll it'll all come by and by. But, yeah, just really excited about the guys that we acquired. I think we have the, the ability to be a, a great team this year. We love to hear that. I want to hear about those rookies, of course. You've had this front row seat to watching Jalen Hurts. He was in the headlines in the offseason, of course. The loss is behind you. There's probably no better person to lead that team and the mentality he has in looking forward and turning the page than Jalen Hurts. And you got to watch him crush it with your Sooners probably before even ending up in Philadelphia. You've seen his mm-hmm. growth. Lane, what's the biggest thing that sort of maybe stuck out to you once you became teammates from watching him back when he was in college? And and what have you noticed about his growth the most over the past couple of years? I mean, obviously he's grown as a player. I just think his, uh, you know, the quarterback position, his temperament and demeanor, how he goes about his business uh, every day, um, how he conducts himself in the meeting room, and just that confidence that's infectious. Um, you know, he, he says a lot without without saying a whole lot, if, if you know what I mean. So I think that's infectious mm-hmm. to the team. And really, I, like I said, it's like a coach that's very calm, how he is in the huddle. That really helps the football team um, adjust to different situations, good or bad. And I think, you know, have, you know gives us the ability to, to ride the different challenges that each game presents. But I think that's probably the biggest thing is just his confidence and how he carries himself. I love to hear that. We can't wait to get you guys back in the Super Bowl this year. Uh, you signed that deal. You're ready to go. And you, you mentioned how it takes some luck. It takes good fortune. It takes health and all of that. And there's the physical part of that. And then there's the mental aspect of that. And even in talking about your quarterback, Jalen Hurts, you're talking about his demeanor. You're talking about, you know, how he handles things as a leader. And you're such an advocate. You're a leader in this space. You really are. It's Mental Health Awareness Month all of May. You don't do stuff in May. You do stuff all year round and you're such a strong advocate you're the first uh, athlete ambassador for Couth okay and Couth mm-hmm. is a leading mental health digital platform and it's aimed towards kids you're partnering with Couth and the Philadelphia School District this is about the coolest thing I've seen all off season what made you want to get involved in this I, I just think over the past few years that athletes in general have promoted mental health and I feel like you know in our profession 
that a lot of the struggles we go through are, you know, with ourselves. And I think just developing yourself to be the best person you can be, not only with Phil, but I just think it helps with every aspect of life, relationships, um, you know, business. And I think, you know, develop that at a young age, at least bringing the knowledge to kids to uh, to work on themselves and develop themselves in that sense can make all the difference. And I, I think it's maybe a, a platform that maybe I wish I would have had when I was younger and could have taken advantage of. Yeah. But, yeah, I just see that it's going to affect a, a lot of young men and women and, and help develop them to be the best person that they can be. And so I think just the mental health in general, uh, I think you saw like Kevin Love, uh, different guys like Tyson Fury yeah. promote it. But I think now that, you know, even Joe Burrow, Solomon Thomas, guys are jumping in, in the NFL and they don't realize how much impact that they have, you know, over their communities. It's amazing. It's geared towards school-aged children. It's Couth. Guys, download it. If you're in the Philadelphia area, definitely use the resources that are available to you. And you bring it back to sports and the tremendous pressure that athletes are under. You've been so candid about it. What have you noticed even in the Eagles locker room as far as what the team is making available to you guys for resources and how to deal with and cope with the lights that you guys are under? Yes, I feel like uh, just NFL has provided more um, – you know, resources for us, whether it be sports psychologists to talk to um, and really, you know, better yourself as a football player. And then you have resources where you can talk about stuff off the field and really learn how to manage any problems that you have effectively. I feel like a lot of times uh, a lot of people maybe procrastinate their problems and uh, put it aside, but it's really a way to address mm. your problems uh, and maybe overcome yourself, maybe get out of your own way a little bit and, uh, and, you know, in that sense. And yeah, I just feel like that's really, it's helped a lot of, a lot of people, um, you know, become a better football player. And then that kind of goes into uh, becoming a better person It helps, you know, everything off the field. So it kind of goes hand in hand. It's really beautifully said. And, you know, I've, I've heard you talk about it. I see you talk about it. I had never gone to therapy. I went to therapy for the first time yesterday. I had a zoom call. Yeah. I did it for an hour. It was my first time. It was easy and um, it were easy like easy to do it wasn't hard to find someone or you know to get connected and it's something that I'm really looking forward to when it comes to reducing anxiety when it comes to becoming a more optimal self-actualized person so thank you for inspiring that because you really did you and all the players who are so open and candid about how important it is to sort of not put it aside and to focus on it so thank you Lane it's very cool uh, that yeah, you are cool. like this and that you're helping young kids yeah, it is cool. And like I said, it's uh, it's a weird experience at first, you know, maybe trying some of this stuff. But as you get into it more, you learn more about yourself maybe than you ever have. And you can start kind of unpeeling layers that you've that you've put up over the years and and really help become a better, like I said, a better version of yourself. It's amazing. It translates down to the field. We even asked some of our, you know, our community at Up and Adams, like all the sports fans, the NFL people, uh, you know, what is your best anxiety reducing technique? Because you shared some of yours on Twitter and you had some breathing exercises. But here's some of the answers that uh, our producer, Marissa, who you'll meet in a second, likes. First one is this one. Solitude and silence. Yeah, that's a good one for me. Just get, you know, yeah. Wayne, I know you love going fishing. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I like uh, maybe getting out of the digital realm and getting back into, uh, you know, nature. Like I said, quiet time. I feel like that's the, maybe the thing that people need to live with the, the most is being able to be quiet, not having any type of stimulation or, or a phone and learn how to be just with yourself. And uh, yeah, like I said, uh, during the whole process, you'll learn a, a lot about yourself uh, as you, you know, work through these new challenges and new programs. But uh, at the end of the day, it's so uh, refreshing and, yeah, just just a lot of positivity at the end of the day. And someone else said music and journaling, and then someone, I mean, people are just giving. I was really impressed. Everyone really gave what they do when they're feeling a little bit of anxiety or a little stress or they just want to focus on themselves. I thought that was really, really impressive. So we appreciate everything that you do, of course, with everything. But we want to get into, you know, somebody mentioned music. Music is a cool thing to do. So let's bring in somebody who's the biggest Eagles fan I know, and you have to meet her if you've never have. Her name is Marissa McBride. She's a producer on our show. She's a resident Philadelphia uh, correspondent. And she has she has a question for you, Marissa. Go for it. Oh no, we can't hear her. Yeah, hear we either. can't hear you. Hey, sorry. Hey, Lane. How are you? <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> good morning. Uh, sh good morning. Shout out to this first album. I had it on my bookshelf, but I saw something in interesting on my Instagram feed. Is there is there another uh, album on the way? I saw an Instagram. I saw a little eye emoji that you commented. Can you confirm or deny another album? 
Oh. Ooh, uh, I can confirm we're working on music. We haven't, uh, you know, put a whole album together, but yeah, it's still it's still in the works. So we just uh, actually got in the studio uh, last week, and so yeah, this whole new music venture is totally new to me. Uh, obviously, Jordan's very talented. Uh, Kelsey and I enjoy music, obviously, but just getting uh, to work with people in the music industry and you see how things are designed and how everything's put together. It takes a lot of work and I just have a, you know, a lot of respect for these people and uh, obviously it's going for a good cause and just, yeah, the whole process is kind of like me getting out of my comfort zone. There's nothing comfortable about me going into a music studio and, and not feeling like uh, fully equipped to uh, produce kind of the sound you want. But at the end of the day, it's, it's very fun. And uh, the people that I work with, uh, it's a great time. And, and yeah, uh, so I can't <laughs> confirm that it, that it is in the works. I think I have two more questions is. for you. Well, first of all, who's who's the worst singer? Sorry, Mar sorry, Marissa. Who's the worst singer? Ooh, uh, it's down to, to Kels and I. Uh, Kels has like his niche. I have, I guess, my niche. Uh, but yeah, we both enjoy it. We're not very over-the-top talented, but we do enjoy being in there. And then we kind of got to uh, sit back and, and hear Jordan sing, who's obviously very talented. And so he kind of makes up for, for some of the time lost on there with, with Kels and I. I love that. All right. Thanks so much, Marissa. I have one question for you because we were talking about when we, you know, the last couple games we saw you last year. I know you want to look ahead, but we cannot let you get away without answering this question. This year's NFC Championship performance up against Mr. Nick Bosa, who won the awards, blah, blah, blah. Was that, in your opinion, because it's mine, your most dominant performance to date? Uh, it, it, was a good, it was a good game for me. Besides, I think I got bull rushed a couple times, especially the first bull rush. He sent me back in the pocket. But, yeah, I mean, anytime I'm going against a great player like that, they have my utmost attention. And it's just one of those things that when you play a great player, they're so smart, so you have to – really dial in each and every play. And I feel like, you know, uh, obviously the injury and then him, I th you know, obviously had my my attention. And, yeah, it was just one of those games that everything kind of fell into place. And um, I feel like some of the time that I did have to recover or my injury was, wasn't bothering as much as maybe it was in the Giants game. So I felt a little more comfortable out there. Yeah, I mean, you had a torn abdomen, zero sacks, zero quarterback case. That's going to be your Hall of Fame case someday. Lane, we appreciate you.